Hello, it's me. Hey, Adele. I was wondering if after all these years you would like to meet. Sure, Adele, I would love to meet. Do you want to come for a walk with me? So obviously that was not Adele. That was me pretending to be Adele because I don't sing. We're going to take a deep breath in through the nose. We're going to exhale through the mouth. And we're just going to start walking. Give yourself a warm-up. Start not too fast, not too slow. Going to shake out your hands. Shake out your feet a little bit. We're going to warm up your joints. So just swing your arms gently. You can go front to back. Around out to the side. Flap your wings like a birdie. I'm <laughs> up to you. Depends who's watching, if you're walking indoor or outdoor. And I'm going to be talking and, and giving you some more instructions and coaching as we go along. But we're going to not do too much blah blahing at first. We're just going to get going because none of us have time for that. We do not. So we're just going to start with a bang. Going to get our blood flowing. I'm going to prime our bodies for the walking. Another deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through your mouth. If you've never walked with me before, I'll explain as we go along what we're doing. If you have walked with me, then you already know that I'm a giant fan of oxygen. <laughs> oxygen is important, and I just talk about it all the time, almost as much as I talk about chocolate or even cats. You're going to hold the warm-up speed here. You're going to shake out your toes a little bit. And maybe do some torso twists so you just move your upper body a little bit side to side while you're walking. Stretch out that torso. You can even lift your knees. You can do toe taps. If you're not walking outside, if the weather's bad or you just don't have the opportunity, there's a lot of things you can do inside. So I'm going to say like go faster or go harder when we do a little bit more work. So you can just go harder or if you're on the elliptical machine, and let's say you're going as fast as you comfortably can. You can just add a little more incline or whatever they call it. I haven't been elliptical for a really long time. And stay with that warm-up speed. Keep your breathing going. Roll those shoulders backwards. Roll those shoulders forwards. Nice deep breath in through the nose. I always say nice. I mean, we're not going to say mean deep breath in through the nose. And exhale through your mouth. You can dance walk. You can just dance walk around your house. You can use a treadmill and you can adjust the incline. Or if you have an indoor bike or a rowing machine, or when we're, if you're marching in place, you could actually just go up and down some stairs, you know, and just get a little harder workout there. If you're at a gym and you have an indoor walking track, you could walk there. Or of course, one of my favorites is mall walking. You can go early like before there's a lot of people there and you can just do your challenge there in the mall because there's lots and lots of room to walk around there or the airport on the runway. Hey, who is that? Oh, never mind. I'm just doing the walking challenge. Now go a little faster. Nothing too crazy yet. You can also create a mini circuit in your home. So you can go like from room to room to room to room if you want to walk around. And you can also pick things up and, and move things around and clean things where you're going from room to room because then it's like a double whammy. Another deep breath in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. So each day we're going to talk about something that hopefully you'll find helpful. And we're going to go on a coach walk at the same time. With my usual podcast episodes, I make two versions. One with background walking music, one without. I'm not sure yet if that is what I'm going to do or not here because it takes a long time. And I don't know to put the music. I don't know if I have the time to put the music on. So. I'm going to try, but if I can't, I can't. And you can just walk to the rhythm in your head. Hold on to that pace, a little bit more than a warm-up. And if you want to do more, for example, if you want to work a little bit harder, maybe you can't go faster wherever you're walking. You could try to do some walking lunges or a curb. You can step up and down on a curb, not in, not in the busy street. Um, you can step up and down on a bench or on someone's pavers as long as you don't break them. I'm a champion of breaking people's things when I go visit. So uh, for me, I probably wouldn't do that. But if you're not a big breaker like I am, then you could step up and down on pavers. There's a lot of things outside too that you can find to give you a little bit more of a push. Now, a little bit faster. Also, normally during my regular episodes, I tend to do more intervals, but 
during the walking challenge, we're just going to go progressively faster or work progressively harder. And then um, we'll kind of slow it down. So it'll be a little bit easier for you to follow if, if you've never done this kind of walking before. Another deep breath in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. I'm always going to remind you about the breathing. When I used to teach spin for, what, 15 years? I always used to remind everybody to breathe and also to relax their shoulders. And I'm going to do the same to you because it helps me remember by reminding you to do it. We get so focused and we get tense and our shoulders go up and then our hands get tight and then we don't fill our lungs all the way. Now hold on to that pace. And then before I forget, being the queen of ADHD, there is a bell at the halfway point. So when you hear the bell, it's not the, nothing scary, no emergency. It just means that if you want, you can turn around and head back. That way you know pretty much where that halfway marker is. Another deep breath in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. You're going to relax your stomach when you breathe in. And don't worry, no one's looking. You're going to relax your stomach. And then when you exhale, you're going to use your stomach a little bit to just pull your stomach in to expel all that air. I like to think about it as like we're bringing in fresh air and then we're expelling stale air because sometimes I have a lot of stale air. Maybe not a lot of hot air, but I have a lot of stale air sometimes. Go a little faster. Another deep breath in. Now, if any point you feel like slowing down and you feel like you don't want to hold your speed, you don't have to. This, Or maybe you can't. Maybe you're in a city with lots of crosswalks and people. Then you just do what you can. This is for you, and this is all about what you need and what you want to do. Be in touch with your body and feel exactly like what's going on in your body, and then you just take it from there because we want to be gentler with ourselves. We're not always the gentlest with ourselves. We're great with other people, but we're not always the gentlest with ourselves. If there's no music uh, with this episode, you're just going to find your natural rhythm, kind of like, let's groove tonight, boom, 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 boom. You know, think of your favorite songs, like what would be a good warm-up, what would be a good song for a faster, what would be a good song for your cool down, but I may surprise you, I may put some music in here, I don't know. We'll see what I have time for, because life is busy. Roll those shoulders back. And then roll them forward. Now do a little bit of an intensity boost here now. You should be nice and warm. I always say nice a lot, and I say bit a lot. It's my thing. I, apparently, I can't seem to stop it. So nice. You're going to have lots of nice deep breaths in. Maybe not, you know, you know, not nice deep breaths in. Lots of deep breaths in. Nice ones. And as we walk, just kind of pay attention to how your body feels. Pay attention to... Your surroundings, to the breeze, if there's any sun, if there's birds chirping, and just kind of like take this moment for you. If possible, put your phone on, do not disturb. And that way you can have just some time, you know, where you can just take a moment and focus on you. Feel how good it feels just to actually be more positive and get fresh air and get that precious oxygen flowing. Hold on to that little intensity boost there. Keep breathing. Relax your hands, too, because a lot of times we we squeeze them a little too tight. And as you're holding on to that intensity boost, we're going to talk about the lesser-known benefits of walking. Now, most of us are familiar with the more standard benefits, increasing your mood or, you know, making you happier, burning some calories, getting fresh air, getting some vitamin D. But there are some that we don't really think about, and one of the ones is it really helps your joints, all of your joints. Now, any kind of movement, you know, because we all sit too much, and I am, yes, I am guilty of that as well. Any kind of movement helps lubricate those joints. But walking is so great for that because it lubricates the joints and it strengthens the joints. It can also prevent arthritis. And you get that fresh blood circulating. I'm all about the fresh blood, the fresh oxygen. Hold on to that boost. It also helps with your digestion. So it stimulates your digestive system. And it reduces some common issues like bloating, constipation, gas. It really helps get everything going, as you already have heard, I'm sure, in the past on that. Roll those shoulders. Also, it improves your posture. So walking helps strengthen your core muscles, and it helps promote better posture that way. 
Also, when you roll your shoulders forward, you roll your shoulders back, you're going to get naturally into a better posture. And another benefit is it helps boost your immunity. Now, most exercise is really good for boosting your immunity, but it, walking helps enhance your immune system, you know, which will help protect you against illnesses. So those are like some of the lesser known benefits of walking. Deep breath in. Now, in case you don't know, this is an unscripted show, so I just say whatever. I have some notes to remember that I wanted to share with you, and that's about it. So we just go off with the conversation like, wherever it takes us. You want to be a little uncomfortable with this boost. It's not super hard. It's just faster than the warm-up, and it helps just, you know, get everything going and wake everything up. Another deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And do you feel the power in your legs when you walk? So feel like you're getting a burst of power with every step. You want to engage your muscles, engage the muscles in the legs, engage the muscles in your glute. So squeeze your butt when you're walking and just kind of like let the momentum build by connecting with these parts of your body, the parts in your lower body. Everything is strong and everything is steady. But you're relaxing your core when you breathe, relaxing your stomach. You're breathing in through the nose. You're exhaling through the mouth. And you're just really keeping nice, powerful lower body with powerful steps. You can back off on the burst a little bit if you want. It's totally up to you. Take another deep breath in. So we already know that walking is really good for your mental health. It's really good with increasing your mood, but it also reduces stress. So it releases endorphins, which is my favorite hormone. When I used to teach spin, I used to call it chasing endorphins because I would get my heart rate up and I'd be really happy after. I never wanted to go, but because it was, it was teaching, I had to show up. And so once class was over, I felt so good. So it releases endorphins, it lowers your cortisol levels, and it just makes you feel calmer overall. And with your mood, so how it works is it increases your serotonin. If you're familiar with some antidepressants, they can help increase your serotonin, but you can do this naturally with your walking. And then, of course, that reduces depression and also reduces anxiety. Sometimes when I'm really anxious, I just go for a walk and I listen to, not a, ser not a serial killer book because that does not help with anxiety, but I listen to something a little bit more relaxing, maybe some good music or maybe something more positive or even like a affirmation type YouTube video. Another deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth again. Check in with your body. Check in for any tense spots. You want to be strong and centered, but you don't want to be overly tight, except you can always squeeze those glutes because that makes good step motions. That really gives you some power. So if you want to go faster, you can. It makes it a lot easier to get some power behind your steps. And speaking of boost, we boost our creativity with walking. I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but a lot of times when I'm stuck on something, like I run my own business, I do graphic design and I have a marketing agency. And sometimes I'll just look at the screen, I'll be just completely stuck. And no matter what I do, I just can't get out of that. Like I'm looking at the screen and nothing's happening and I cannot come up with the design or the words. And so what I do is I'll just get out and go for a walk and put on a really good song, something that pumps me up. But it has been shown to really help foster different kinds of thinking, and unlocks your creativity. Do a little bit of a speed increase now, just a little bit. Be really good if you, of course, the society's not really meant to, or designed yet for this, but if you were working on a problem at work and you could walk with a coworker or a team member or several team members, you guys can get out and brainstorm while you're walking, that would be amazing because you, when you're doing rhythmic work, like that, it really helps free your mind. So that's why I used to also love spinning because once you get on the bike, you close your eyes, you get in the groove of things. It's amazing just how your mind just starts to roam and come up with all these amazing solutions. Hold on to that little bit uncomfortable pace. It's not going to be too hard, just going to be enough, but make sure you're breathing. Inhale through your nose, fill up that stomach area, even though we know we don't have lungs in the stomach, but it gives you a visual. And then when you exhale, you're going to just try to squeeze that tummy to empty all that air out. Roll those shoulders backwards. Roll those shoulders forward. One foot in front of the other. You're just going to think about the present, where you are. 
You're going to think about how your body's feeling and nothing else right now. But all of us can use this centering and grounding ourselves. And, you know, when I used to spin, I always talk about spin. I'm really boring. I talk about spin and cats usually. That's that's my thing. Um, Is that it really helps ground you. So use these moments, this exercise or these sessions of walking to help ground you. Going to find your rhythm, find your zone. And breathe. Just feel how good it feels for your body to move. Walking in particular also helps with your sleep quality because it really helps get your calming effect in. And in some of these later episodes, we're actually going to talk about walking morning versus evening. I've done some research on it, so I want to share that information with you and how it can help you sleep, and how it can also help you get started with your day. So it really depends on if you're a night person or a morning person. But walking really helps your sleep quality, especially if you get out first thing in the morning, even if it's short, and you get that sun in your eyes, really helps reset your body clock. Another deep breath in. Now go just a little bit faster. Going to awaken all those senses. Check in with your body. Breathe. If you feel industrious right now, you could do some walking lunges. You could do some step-ups on a curb. You could do some step-ups on those, what are those things? I just said them earlier, the things in the ground, planter things. (laughs) I tell you, being 57 is no fun because that word is now permanently gone. Deep breath in again. You can push it up a little bit as we go. You can find things. You find a hill, go Take it, charge up the hill. You'll feel that power. It's so empowering when your body just like syncs up and connects and you can just do something you didn't think that you could do. And that's also part of the point of this walking challenge is just to kind of get you into walking, get you into moving. Relaxing your feet, relaxing your hands and taking this time for you. Some of you are probably like too young. But do you remember that song by John Denver? I think it's just called Sunshine. Sunshine on your shoulders makes you happy, makes me happy. But we're going to say sunshine on your shoulders makes you happy. Air filling your lungs makes you naturally high. See, I just made a new lyric. It's true. You feel so much more awake when you get that oxygen through your system and when you fill up those lungs. And also, here's something that I needed to tell you and I almost forgot is that According to Harvard Health, if you walk 30 minutes a day, it reduces your risk of heart disease by about 30%. It doesn't seem like a lot, but 30% is a big decrease. And all you have to do is get out and walk, and you can break it up. We're also going to talk about that in some of the other challenge days. Another deep breath in. Okay, I, I lied. We're just going to go a little bit faster right now. Let's do a little intensity boost right here. Just a little push. It's okay. I lie all the time to myself, <laughs> to you, to my students. I used to say, okay, the interval is almost done, and then the interval would not be done. But then, you know, at the end, they would be happy and they'd forget that I directly lied to them about how much work was left. There was another study, I think at Stanford, where they found that walking can boost your creative thinking by 60%. So when we do get stuck, go out there, you'll boost that creativity by 60%. Another deep breath in through your nose and hold on to that push. Relax those shoulders, though. I want you to roll them forward and roll them back. Take another deep breath in and exhale. So these walks will be all different lengths. You don't have to start on any specific day, although it would be good to start with one just so you can kind of get the introduction to it. And you don't have to do them in order. You don't have to start on January 1st. You don't have to start on a Monday. You can start anytime you want. Slow it down just a little. That's one thing I wrote in my book. I wrote a book in 2012, and then I wrote a follow-up book after that. But I talk about just doing what's right for you to get fitter and healthier and not doing what everybody else says, but just finding what works for you. Because we can't go 100% or 200%, as I like to say, or 400%. We can't go all out because it's not sustainable. We can't keep up the five days a week at the gym. We can't keep that up, usually. We can't keep up, you know, the no carbs, usually. 
We can't keep up no sugar, usually. I refuse to give up sugar and caffeine and gluten because that's just who I am. Now, my shoulders, when I was talking about them, my shoulders just went up because I started to get stressed. So I'm going to bring my shoulders back down. You too. Slow it down just a little more. So you find what works for you, something that makes your life feel like it has quality, something that makes you happy, something that you can sustain. Because that's how you keep going. But small habits, small changes, small things we do for our health are certainly doable. You can walk 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes during your break at work. Slow it down just a little bit more. Feel the surroundings around you. Become aware of everything, how your body feels. Another deep breath in. So we're going to wind it down. You're going to go back into a little more relaxed pace. You're going to feel any tension in your body just melting away. You've been out there moving your body. And now we're just going to slow everything down a little bit. Now, if you want to do more than one, once we get a few episodes under our belt, so if you want to do more than one, you can do more than one at a time. Or if you want to walk longer, you can put on some music after this. When I used to be a personal trainer, I used to tell people like, okay, we're going to do 15 bicep curls. If they were not tired after the 15th rep, I would tell them, you keep going. Doesn't matter what I say. If your muscle is not tired, you don't stop at 15. And the same thing with you. When you're doing this walking, you're doing this for you and you're learning how your body works. So if you want to go longer, put on some music and go longer. We're going to finish strong with just a few deep breaths. One of my favorite things to say is inhale energy or positivity, up to you, and exhale any remaining tension. You did a great job, and I would love for you to share this walking challenge. It's totally free with anybody you think who would love to get out there and give it a try. And I do this as a labor of love. There's no advertisers. I'm not selling you anything. If you would like to donate to the walking challenge, you can. ko-fi.com slash walk and talk and i have a donation of like three dollars on there it's one time monthly you could do three dollars five dollars if you want if you don't want to that is absolutely not what this is about but it helps me make all these episodes for you okay take another deep breath in in through your nose relax your stomach and exhale oh yes one last thing because you know me and my memory (laughs) is that I would love for us to create a hashtag so we can keep each other accountable and we're going to talk about accountability in future episodes. So let's do, how about walk, talk, challenge? Or no, or walk, talk with Helen. Let's just do that as a hashtag. If you want to take a picture of your shoes, your feet, or what you're seeing around you, that would be so cool. And you use that hashtag on any of your social media. Uh, It could be Instagram, threads, stories. Facebook, TikTok, you can take a video of your surroundings. That way we know that you're part of the challenge. We'll create our little community so that we can help each other stay accountable and help each other do this. And that way I can also communicate with you and feel free to message me. I am on in- I am on Instagram. I believe it's your walking podcast. And same thing with Facebook. I have a page. And the podcast page, which I need to update with the other latest episodes, is walkingandtalking.show. So when you get back or when you're done, just do a little bit of stretching. Stretch out your calves. Stretch out the front of your thighs. Oh, I love to stretch out my hips. One of my favorite stretches. On the podcast page itself, I will put some suggested stretches so you can see maybe what you can do afterwards. So that will be Walking and Talking Nut Show because I'm a little slow getting episodes up there. Maybe give me a minute because, you know, my ambition is like my eyes are bigger than my stomach. My ambition is always bigger than my available time. (laughs) Isn't that the same with all of us? And let's keep walking and I will see you tomorrow.